Hey guys, this is Cameron and Becca. We're the Married Misadventures family and we are here to save you some money, some time, and some heartache. Today we're going to talk about some things that weren't told to us when we got here and really hit us hard um, and hit a lot of people that we know hard. It's going to be three things we're going to talk about and they all kind of relate to finding like your living space. Housing, yeah, yeah, housing. Renting. Renting, mm -hmm. yeah, renting specifically. Um, so we're going to go over those three things, and hopefully they save you a lot of time and a lot of heartache. Mm -hmm. So the first one is when you are getting a house out here, you like signing a lease, you have to pay lawyer fees. Um, yes. And these lawyer fees can vary from, like, it's, it's, it's just like on top of whatever it is that you have on the contract. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, what's the range? It's like... We've paid anything from like a full month of yeah. rent to like a quarter yeah month. i've seen yeah, like i don't know it's really random for, in our experience i don't know if there's any sort of system to it honestly yeah i think it, it's it's at their discretion and i think we paid like 200 one time pesos yeah no 200 usd usd okay yeah, yeah. and we go to like a separate place and the lawyer's there and they kind of just like sign on the paper and it's just kind of a fee that comes out uh you can negotiate to kind of like get it down i think that that is something you can do but it just hit us like you know it was like oh we scrounged up the money and we pay in chunks so we try to pay like six months to three months or whatever in advance so we don't have to think about it so when it's like okay six months rent and the lawyer fees it's like whoa another reason we try to do the chunk and this doesn't always work in our favor oh wait i'm cooking rice <laughs> alexa uh timer off you can go ahead and keep talking my cookies. Rice is off. Okay. What were you saying? One reason we do the chunks of rent, this doesn't always work in our favor, but we try to like track the trend of the peso. Um, because one good thing about it is if you're you're starting your rent at a time where the conversion is in your favor, then you can just pay at that rate. As opposed to say one month you're paying 800 for 800 USD for rent, the next it might be like, oh now it's 825, and the next month oh it's 875. So yeah. if you can catch it at a good time and be like, oh yeah, I want to pay like six months, it does save you money in the long run. But sometimes you might miss out and be like, oh well I could have paid a month where it's a little cheaper. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, like we just don't want to think about it. So that's another big reason that we do that. But the legal fee definitely like we didn't really account for that first coming here mm -hmm. so it kind of caught us off guard yeah and uh which kind of is like a segue into the next thing so like the legal fee was something that caught us off guard and we're thinking okay cool we're gonna pay six months rent and pay like you know the deposit is one month but if you are not it's a, a mexican citizen right so it's called an avow yes yes so you need to have this thing called an aval, which is basically a another Mexican citizen that owns property in Mexico has to give you this, and it's basically like vetting for you, like, yeah, they're good. I've either it's maybe it's someone that um, you've rented from before, but they have to give you this aval, and it's kind of like a guarantee um, that you know they're they're legit, basically. Yeah, it's like vouching for you. Or, yeah, vouching for you. That's the word. Yeah. Vouching for. Thank you. So. If you get that, that means you don't have to pay that the means double you deposit. Don't have to pay double deposit, but if yeah. you do not have that, then you need to pay a double, double deposit, deposit, and that hurts like that. It's gonna get even worse as the video goes on because mm -hmm. there's one more thing that's going to hurt you more than a double deposit, or maybe just about the same. So the double deposit, like on top of the first month's rent. So yeah. when you when you do the contract, it's the legal fee, the double deposit. And the first month of rent. <laughs> yeah. So you're just like, I mean, that's just a ton of money just, just coming out. They're just pulling just, it out. Yeah. So we, you don't have to do six months rent. Mm -hmm. We, that's something we choose to do. You can just do the double deposit, you know, first month's rent and the lawyer fee. And if that's cool with you, then fine. But um, that double deposit hurts, man. It, it really, it like, it just, you know, having that initial payment. So it kind of keeps you like in the spot. Uh, that you're in because you don't want to have to keep jumping around paying double deposits uh, which we've done and uh, it's 
Yeah, it's just inconvenient. It's just inconvenient. Um, Because also, there's not a guarantee you're going to get it back. Which is the last thing we're going to talk about, which is uh, the culture of deposits is you're not going to get it back out here. Yeah, we've heard from multiple people like, oh, just expect it gone. Or they always kind of like make some sort of excuse basically of like what they had to use the money for yeah. um our first ap- apartment we were like during our our stay there we were like oh the couch is like upholstery is really off like do you yeah. want to fix it and uh, there's some things going on do you want to fix it and they're like no no it's fine it's fine um just if you don't want the couch put it outside whatever yeah and then at the end of our lease they were like, oh, well, we had to get the couch reupholstered, and we had to fix that thing that you said. Yeah, so we had to paint the whole house. We had to paint house. the entire apartment over again, and we were like, okay, well, you could have done that while we were yeah. here without using our double deposit, but yeah, yeah, it, we found out it was kind of typical for that to happen. Yeah, and I'm big on getting the deposit back. Like, I go into this yeah. mode when, you know, we're about to move out, I will, I'll knock it out. I'll give mm-hmm. it to you the way that, you know, it came. And, um, you know, we tried to talk to them about it. We had them check. They even went through the checklist and they showed, like, all these things. And they were like, oh, this isn't important. That's not important. Don't worry. But then, you know, later it was like, oh, yeah, you're not getting any deposit back. And they were like, on top of having the, the double deposit. And this is, how much were we paying? This is $1,600. That was our double deposit. Yeah. They used the whole thing, they said. And then they were like, oh, well, we actually might even need more money. And it's like, what are you doing? Like, are you building a new apartment? Or (laughs) it just, it didn't make sense. And I know I did a good job of cleaning the place and getting it back to where it is. So just be very careful. Take pictures. Don't, when you're walking through and someone's like, oh, well, this doesn't work. It's, don't worry about it. Take pictures of that and hold on to those pictures. Because sometimes you will get a cool landlord. Sometimes you will get someone who actually doesn't care about things and, you know, you can be friendly, but honestly, just to protect yourself, just take pictures. Take pictures, document everything, and make sure that it's signed. Because even with the place we're in now, um, you know, there were things we were told in our lease that were going to be fixed, and they, they weren't. Or things were going to be clean when we got in, and it wasn't. Um, and we can do that ourselves, but, you know, just make sure you protect yourself, mm-hmm. even though it may seem like, oh, it's friendly or whatever. Um, because sometimes that can't come back and bite you, like, just it's just in so many ways. So yeah, because we weren't even like we wouldn't even really say it was a problem. We could have probably just chalked it up to that one landlord, but then multiple people told us like, oh yeah, that's typical, or like yeah, you're probably not gonna get your deposit back, or oh, same thing happened to me. Yeah. So I think it is just part of the experience here. Yeah, because this is we we didn't get our deposit back on the first place, so we were in Platinum Departamentos. And they said that was $1,600 USD, and they just, like, took that, and it wasn't in bad condition. Then the next place we lived in, they were trying to, so we broke the lease. We had to leave, like, I don't know, like a month earlier. And, we, mm-hmm. and so when you break the lease, they keep one of the deposits just off principle. Right, it's fair. And, but we got the other one back because they took a long time to check the apartment. Like, the day we left, we were like, okay, they were like, we're going to check out the apartment. It took, like, two months. It took a long time for them to actually check the apartment Mm -hmm. out. And then when they finally did, they walked through. They did like kind of a half-assed walkthrough and um, then gave us the deposit back. And then later we're like, oh, we need the deposit because this, this, this. And it's like, it's over. Sorry. It's over. (laughs) You didn't check. Uh, So they tried to take the deposit. And I don't know what's going to happen here, the place that we're in. I don't know. I mean, landlord's right next door. He seems pretty cool, but Mm -hmm. just, I don't know, like, would I be greedy for two months rent on top of what is already there? Maybe. Depends on your situation, I guess. And also, like, we fixed things in this house, so hopefully he takes that into consideration. I doubt it. Just keep my my expectations low uh, and keep yours low as well, as well as um, be aware of these things Mm -hmm. so you're not, like, stuck. When you think of getting an apartment, think of that double deposit. Yeah, and the legal fees. So, like, what you see for rent on the listing, 
triple that and then some with that legal fee so you know how much to put aside and how much you're actually going to have to put up to rent if you don't have the eval. If you know somebody with property here, that's great, but yeah. we we just didn't at the time. We do now. We do now, yeah. We could probably get it now if we yeah. go from this place. Well, that's it. I mean, that's basically all that we have. And if you watched the last video, you also know that having a landlord with uh, an American bank account helps to kind of like cut that peso to USD ratio uh, down. And yeah, definitely check out that video to, to get a few more tips about how, you know, to avoid these mistakes you make if you're planning on moving to Merida. And hope you enjoy the video. If you do, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, all that. Uh, subscribe, of course. And if you do want us to check out a place or, you know, we do have a consultation service as well. Uh, so if you're coming, trying to move to Merida and you have like a house in mind, or if you need help looking for a place like you have, we can definitely help out. Uh, so just message us on Instagram or email us at themerrymissadventuresof.com. That's wrong. It's at <laughs> gmail.com. Good night. <laughs>